Hello and welcome to yet another episode at You Are Human. I am indeed so grateful to all of you for showing up. This is my greatest, greatest, greatest support. At You Are Human, we try to understand the human spirit, potential and possibilities. Today with me is someone who is a host, presenter, actor, motivational speaker and content creator. And maybe a lot more which we will know from him directly. He, since the age of five, knew what he wants to become. An actor, that is. Please welcome Zoran Sahar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jagrati. It's wonderful being on this beautiful show. Thank you so and, much. And all the amazing work you've been doing in the previous past uh, and so many months leading up to this because I've been yeah. watching all these episodes and really wonderful to be over here. Thank you so much. And I mean, and you're also my audience. So thank you so much because uh, I think um, that's one of the biggest support for content creators or, you know, podcasters and someone who's doing it independently. Right. The only thing I can rely is on the support of my guests and my audiences. So thank you so much for Not being a support system and thank you Pleasure. so much for doing this. And I think we have been talking about this for a while and I'm so happy that we are finally doing it. Likewise, it's been it's been a lot of planning that's kind of been involved yeah. in this entire thing. Yeah. And it's always fun to kind of just, you know, two collaborative talents coming together, yes. speaking about creativity, art, film and of course, you know, the, the love for movies. Yes, it's absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, as I said in my introduction that since the age of five, you wanted to become an actor. Yeah. Now, is there, like, do you vaguely remember how did that happen? That, mujhe, you know, like saying Haan. that I wanted to become an actor. That was a moment. Tha hai. Yeah, that moment. Like, <laughs> was there a moment or was it like, I mean, is there a backstory to it? I think there's no one small significant thing which kind of changed my life. But I would say a series of various different uh, instances in my life which I felt that I can become an actor I think this is what I want to do. Hmm. Um, the first thing being I think my love for films which is very organic, very natural. Yeah. Very just who I am as a person. It yeah. just kind of comes this, this filmy kira in it's my body. It's in our DNA. It's, it's a part of who we are. <laughs> it's a part of who we are. Yes. <laughs> hey, and then. So, but I think, I, think it was, I think it was just this desire to be in films, hmm. desire to be on screen. And I I think like I've always said this before and I will say it one more time this absolute desire to be yourself when when the, when the cameras are rolling hmm. I think that's when my real self comes out um, I think a com combination of just that my my influence and sort of um, I guess the significance of movies in my life hmm. uh, put together hmm. uh, made me say Ki, yeah this is what I want to do you know because I think when you can really feel at home in a comfort zone about the kind of work you want to put out mm. whether you're passionate about it whether it just comes instinctively whether people applaud you for the work you're doing I think all those things go to kind of explain as to why uh, you should really follow that path so yeah it was very crystal clear for me I think from a very early age like you mentioned uh, I'm not sure it was, I mean it was five or six but from a very early stage in my life um, you know watching films in, in, in the Indian film industry of course English films uh, and then of course growing up to watch some of the most serious cinema various different kinds of genres um, following the lives of actors um, celebrities and I think reading about them getting to know more about them uh, you know I think contributed in making me realize as to how much I hate so I mm. think it was uh, in my head very clear Hmm. Uh, I, I didn't think in any other way and I still feel that you know, even after 31 years um, and I think after actively pursuing act, uh, you know pursuing this field for the last what uh, 12 years now of my life uh, I, can wow. never, I can never get tired of it you can never get tired and it's very interesting you know that you said Ki, when you are playing a character yeah. you feel uh, yourself you feel the most yourself now um, I'm just curious to know because when we are acting because when I've done a little bit of uh, my share of acting, I've done theater in Dubai. And uh, when when you're playing a character, but you're pretending to be someone else. Yeah. So how can you be yourself at that time? I think there are instances of your life or instances of what you do, hmm. which you tend to unknowingly or unabashedly bring along with your acting foray. Hmm. So there are parts of your own life, whether it's a very small, subtle emotion, hmm. whether it's sadness, whether hmm. it's the way you cry in reality, hmm. whether it's the way in which you experience happiness, whether hmm. it's sharing a hug with somebody, whether hmm. it's intimacy, whether it's romance, whether hmm. it's, um, you know, heartbreak. Hmm. Those aspects which are very prevalent in films and cinema nowadays, and I think for quite some time now, hmm. If you are in any which way able to bring those aspects in your work, in your filmography, in your anything, whether it's a short film, whether it's stage, like theater you mentioned, whether it's even the smallest of doing a scene, if you're able to bring elements of it hmm. um, in the work you do, 
Mm. I think that's you being honest to yourself because yeah. while the character may be not who you are in reality, mm. the the preparation or the kind of backbone of what that character is is very much you. The mm. nuance of it is very what you bring to it. Right, right. Were you a very um, shy or an introvert person? Never. As a kid, never. Never. So never. you've always been an extrovert, I, and I always want to sort of. have a conversation with somebody i always want to kind of be out there yeah. i always want to sort of ask the what and the why of things i always want to uh, i have a lot of questions mm. i have a lot of um, you know issues being quiet mm. uh, although nowadays <laughs> <laughs> you have to be quiet most right? of the time because you never know what you're saying and it just gets blown up yeah and up to now i think in in today's day and age where you know how can you say this and how can you say that might as well so exactly so and uh, un- unfortunately sometimes the the best way to kind of live life is to stay quiet for the moment for not too long but but try and i guess uh know what you're saying which which sometimes for for art for artists hmm. uh, doesn't have to be a good thing yeah yeah, yeah. no absolutely and i yeah. think that um more than words even silences they speak yeah. so much yeah. and they hit so hard yeah. so i think uh, in today's day and age where there's when there is so much chaos because everybody's speaking so it's okay to just take a moment to yeah. pause and you know not yeah. say anything yeah, yeah i know we were going to a deeper conversation but i have to say this a couple of days back i was talking to somebody about silence like you mentioned hmm. and i said yeah there is this thing about noise and silence which is very on the face of it they're like yeah what but if you can't understand someone's silence chances are you'll never, never appreciate their words true, true. and i think to be able to fall in love with silence is a very very yes. noble thing yeah. it's very soulful Yeah. um and i think sometimes silence gives you better answers than just True. talking a lot does mm. uh now of course a lot of people that are, that are in the moment and very you know fired up about things love throwing words at you know you or you know you could be in that place but mm. i think there's a lot of dignity in silence yes no absolutely i agree yeah. i agree yeah coming back to acting <laughs> i actually think that um, we are all actors yeah. we are all pretending to be someone playing you know our best character yeah. so i think naturally we are all actors sure and there is a few chosen ones who make it to the screen sure um i understand yes you require talent skills um contacts and you need luck yeah. and i think it really plays a very important role now do you believe in luck uh yes absolutely do you think it's a contributor i think i think a big one mm-hmm. uh, and the reason why i say so is because I, i don't even know if luck is the right word i would say just by chance mm. and i think i think for me in life chance has been a big factor with mm. whatever i've done whether it's even acting or whether it's the person i meet uh you know coming in it's coming across someone like minded just striking conversation which is very beautiful and lovely mm. and very engaging and and you know you kind of get to learn more about the person and in life but speaking about acting yeah i think it's about chance um uh, you, you can you can grasp all the talent you have you can be from a very well known film background you can be you know nepotistic mm. <laughs> but 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 i think the best of examples in life will tell you if sometimes things aren't meant to go your way they just won't go your way mm. similarly if you're absolutely you're meant to be it, yeah nothing can be. stop that and i think this is something which was ingrained to me at a very early stage in my life and when i went to the uh, film school in bombay actor prepares anupam mm. khair school of actor prepares there was a line that uh, one of my professors said ki if you're good at what you do agar aap acche ho kuch cheez mein if you live in the village also and if you suit the role mm. if you absolutely fall into the character's lap wo aapko dhoond ke layenge you know yes, they will yes. bring you from wherever you are mm. they'll 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 grab you mm. because that was meant for you right and and nothing there's no force in this universe no matter who you are can stop you from getting what you deserve mm. so there is this catch 22 situation about yeah work hard really work very hard mm. um and and then i think you got to try and trust your instincts because that's the only way you can go about doing things yes. because uh, as much as you want to work hard also sometimes your best is not enough right and right. and it is heartbreaking and i think um, as an artist i want to say this one more time you'll see a lot of heartbreak you'll see a lot of disappointments mm. you'll see a lot of neyar we didn't deserve that yes but yes. but but that's the irony of mm. creativity and talent and acting because i still say this till today some of my best work has never got appreciation and has never been seen in the way in which i would have wanted it to be seen mm. and some of the stuff which i think was just about okay they're like wow yeah and i'm just like <laughs> if you like this go like that back yes right yes. i mean where is this coming from right so yeah. but but i think that's just the way things go yeah. people see things with a different eye mm. uh the perspective is very subjective 
and i think you have to accept that i think mm. sometimes uh, people like viewing things from a very unique way mm. so i guess makes you learn that also a little yes, bit more so, absolutely. so yeah, it's just a process i guess yeah yeah and you talked about the life of an artist right that mm. there's going to be heartbreak there's yeah. going to be failures there's going to be success uh you know it's often said that we as human beings struggle more in digesting success yeah. more than failure failure is something we will find ways to deal with sure but the harder uh, exam paper in life is success sure you know when we get that sometimes mm. we don't know what to do with it yeah. so you have had the opportunity to work with the bees you know and your film was showcased in the new york film festival so that's a great achievement yeah. and you work with uh, mr amita bachan with shahrukh khan so how was your mind i know because it's something you wanted to do yeah. always and you yeah. got the opportunity and yeah. you were there you're yeah. living your dream yeah. it would be overwhelming yeah. but how was your mindset at that time were you still the same zaran uh you know to your friends to your family or did you get a little bit of a oh to my friends ahead. and family i think they they're very clear about it even now that they will not cheat, treat me in any other different way <laughs> of They'll course like, i'm saying your your response to them like but no, did I, you have any um I, yeah well i had to first of all get over my uh, i wouldn't say inhibitions but i think when you tend to meet someone who's of that stature yeah. and you've looked upon all your life and mm. i think you know these idols of mine you know who have always wanted to kind of have a glimpse of let alone interview or work with i just want to breathe the same air they're breathing you know right. be in that same room yeah. grasp a little bit ki matlab you know like just just touch my shoulder so yeah. i can exchange energy exchange yeah. energy you know <laughs> pass on your magic to me yeah but i think I, i yeah well so that part is very very crucial mm. uh, it's inevitable you will feel like a fanboy or a mm. fan girl mm. and and you can't do anything about it mm. and even they realize it so so let's get <laughs> that out of the way okay okay khush ro tum we happy we'll be started <laughs> but but i think that's the fact right i think yeah so of course i had those moments of uh, oh i hope it kind of goes well but i think the, the the most beautiful thing about you know when i at least when i interview charukh khan is that in the first few minutes of talking to him the 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 one quality which people connect and resonate with is that he makes you believe that you're his best friend yeah and he just wants to talk to you like the most normal guy there ever has been mm. and that is the first thing i grasp from him that this guy who's been my biggest inspiration for so many years for mm. the reason why i ever wanted to become an actor mm. when i spoke to him and i'm like it's endearing mm. it's attractive mm. and it's almost too good to be true that he's so insanely normal mm. he's so ordinary yeah and that is why he's extraordinary right absolutely you know wow. and, and i'm like i'm like because he's so like and literally and i spoke to him for a few minutes and i think in that conversation of 7 minutes he said hi i'm sharuk i'm sharuk i'm sharuk and, and, and in my head i'm like you, you don't, don't have to say that yeah, right? like, <laughs> everybody knows but i'm just like any no i mean if someone does not know they have a problem with themselves yeah. they should know who you are but see the humbleness and how grounded Absolutely. and i think that would have given you a biggest yeah. learning of your life oh 100% and i think i i kind of it very instantly taught me one thing is that this man has achieved so much in life mm. you know he meets what 7000 people a day mm. has 500 people 1000 people screaming his name out mm. every second he breathes mm. and still to kind of be that grounded mm. is an achievement in itself let alone yeah. the other bigger things he's done mm. so i think uh, that was one aspect of learning for me as you as you asked um when i walked the red carpet for my film i think it was just a dream come true uh, it was that it was that uh, child in me which always wanted to kind of you know i wanted a film in my film festival i wanted to walk the red carpet i wanted to be interviewed <laughs> i wanted photographs of me taken i wanted cameras flashing at me thousands of them all of that happened that that entire saga of dream come true fairy tale affair yeah. happened mm. but i have to say something and 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 this is difficult to explain but it gets over very quickly mm. it all happens so fast i did come across a moment in my life after the film got released the next morning as a matter of fact i woke up and i asked myself now what mm. because you feel alone mm. and you feel like you feel hollow do you feel like pressure catch up now this is done now what next now people will yeah. expect more from but me but not pressure you feel like i'm i'm feeling uh, i'm feeling a bank of zero i oh. feel like i have to start from scratch because the the interesting thing about an artist is when when the hype is on its premium level mm. when you're up and doing things you're always in the moment so you're quick you're fast your promotions of this or that editing sound dubbing all that stuff so you're involved in the process mm. once the thing is over everything's out for the world to see and people have loved it clap for you it's nice mm. but 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 now what mm. because now not only have you established your name to a certain level mm. not that i have been any like youth star or whatever but people have seen you they've yeah. watched you yeah uh and i think because they've watched you for who you are mm. there is an added level of 
I expect this from him. Yes. When he moves on. Yes. And and so I don't take it as pressure. Mm. I take it as bring it on because mm. I'm like, okay, so I, I have a sense of responsibility. Mm. It's not any pressure. Pressure for me is when I don't get work. Mm. Pressure for me is sitting and doing nothing. You know, right. I think for me it kind of right. is, a, is a reverse yeah. role. Yeah. I genuinely am in a very dark space when I'm doing nothing. Mm. When I'm busy and doing ten thousand things, that is my sanity. Like for me, meditation yeah. is not having mm. the time to think. You know, for me, meditation is not like free time. I I, right. I, I have a big enmity with free time. So mm. so, but when, when I'm doing things, then yeah, I'm relaxed. Yeah, but I think that's the beauty of life, no? Doing sure. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think doing things which kind of brings about some sort of satisfaction and yeah. some sort of peace of mind. Mm-hmm. And I think nowadays, you know, a lot of progress and you know productivity. Mm. Um, I know in the last what, year and a half, unfortunately, for a lot of stuff that's been happening, and and I think a lot of the things that you would usually do has been curbed. Hmm. because of constraints because of True. people not being able to kind of really go out there and reach out to their own yeah i think it kind of tends to kind of wane in terms of how am i going to get back to normalcy hmm. but but uh, like you mentioned a little while earlier you got to try and find the balance hmm. and try and do what really kind of gives you that you know sort of you, who you are yes you know? bring absolutely. it back to that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you gave like 6 years to mumbai you know and then there was one fine day you said this is it yeah my time here is done whatever i had to give in i have given in and you did your 100% you went for auditions you did everything right and then you said now it's time to move on and you moved to australia, australia. you went to sydney yeah um sharukh khan has a dialogue i do not know whether it is his own for the movie or is it said by someone but in this movie uh, with alia bhat what was it called love is zindagi yeah. love is zindagi dear zindagi uh, dear zindagi sorry love is zindagi is the song the sorry song. guys <laughs> dear zindagi he has this uh, line that he says to alia bhat the alia bhat character that uh, genius is to know when to stop stop so i actually feel so amazing when you said that after 6 years i decided i yeah. have to move on yeah I know so many people who and especially because you know I've grown up in Pune I had my college over there and I still have friends who are in the industry still trying 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 after so many years and not moving to the next level and it's okay it's all right um but I feel that what you did it requires a lot of rational thinking mm. a lot of maturity and coming up with a conversation with my own self you know because sometimes we are so um burdened yeah. by what will my parents say what oh i had so many expectations from myself you know my family had so many expectations sure. should i like take a step back maybe it's a step forward in the yeah. future but yeah. you know people say oh you went to mumbai what happened yeah. so you know those yeah. things also play with sure. our minds but you you know i i, I think and it's, it's kudos to you you know for actually taking that step and going forward now um how how was that decision like was it an easy one to Well, honestly speaking, it was it was a decision that wasn't kind of taken overnight. Hmm. It was a series of various different emotions that were running through my head and mind, personally, professionally also, uh, where I felt, you know, this is the right time. Hmm. I felt uh it's just not doing me good hmm. and I have to leave. Hmm. Uh because it was it was reaching a mental state in my life and space of mind where I wasn't getting what I wanted. Hmm. It was uh you know, causing more damage than progress. Exactly. And I think when when your your mental sanity is disrupted yeah. with something which is not positive, I think it's time to leave. Right. Uh whatever it is and whatever that may be. Uh of course it was the city that I was living in, uh which was Mumbai. Uh and and I think it has given a lot to many people and and uh you know, amazing. That's amazing. But I think you have to take a decision in life in knowing what works best for you. Right. Uh while there are many beautiful aspects of life and people and places mm. that may be beneficial to one's well-being mm. and one's peace of mind there are many places and people that may be very detrimental yeah so in in my case it was just not doing me good mm. because you know eventually when things are doing well you don't look at these things yes it is only the it is only the downtime of you know certain phases of life or certain mm. periods mm. where you start thinking that is this what i really want right and, and more importantly is this what i deserve mm. because Look, everyone works hard. Mm. Everyone's putting in effort. Mm. Everyone's really 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 at it. And and you really like, you know, working day in and day out. Yeah, you have certain days when you're just slogging behind and you know it's not, you know, up to the mark. But more or less, you do everything as you mentioned. I went for the auditions. I got a lot of work as well, don't get me wrong. I actually did get a lot of, you know, short films and a short couple of short films and uh, one web series and a lot of commercials. But but in for me, I had a certain expectation. 
which didn't live up to that. Uh, of course, the rat race is you know magnanimous over there, yeah, uh, because you know you're running against seven thousand new uh, new faces every single day, mm. and that is your competition. So mm. if you can cream that, then God bless you. Yeah, but 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 not everyone can, and I'm not yeah. saying it's not everyone's cup of tea. But uh, seriously, and honestly speaking, you have to be absolutely like I said at the start. just by chance mm. right place right time because it's yes. not like you're bad mm. or he's better than you yeah. it's just that at he that certain there. moment that is what they needed mm. and he was there for it mm. and, and at that moment you were there for it but that is not what they needed correct and if you can make peace with that thought mm. not that you're bad or put yourself down in the process because mm. you were never bad mm. you were always amazing it's just that that thing is not right and meant for you mm. and i think i've i've identified that aspect of my life very early in my life yeah. i think i've been able to kind of put things into perspective as far as what is good for me mm. and and i think that applies with the kind of people that i speak to and talk to as well if i don't kind of feel a vibe in a second mm. i'll be the first one to say thank you very much it's been mm. wonderful knowing you and and then you know you kind of go we we go our own ways but uh was it pressure not really because i was really looking forward to it it kind of had reached a stage where it uh, given it 6 years of my life right mm. so i'd like run the race yeah i i'd seen the journey of it mm. and i said enough yeah. you know i think this is not what i want mm. and 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 i can't handle i can't handle myself being lost more than yes. it already has yes and and it was a very difficult phase in my life and it was very very difficult to kind of uh put into mm. words and, and realize that as much as i love what i do this is you know my my heart and soul my life and i'll give my life to acting till my last breath but but it's not the only place in the world where acting is happening correct yeah, correct I mean, there are a lot of places in the world where the, where the craft happens yeah you know? absolutely so so and that's one of the reasons why when people you know i questions been asked oh so you're giving up acting and i said which day has it been told that acting only happens in bombay yeah Yeah. I'm like uh, ye kisne bataya mm. like I will never give up acting right. you know I'm 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 just I'm just you know it's just taking a bit of a nap yes a- and the other quality is just woken up from sleep so I'm not nourishing that quality which happens to be journalism and presenting yeah incredible. so acting is never stopping yeah. it's just you know yeah it's 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 saying you you go for a walk come back <laughs> we'll meet after a while you know at, at least I look at it that nice. you know so nice. so so yeah for me I think uh, and I think when the the fortune stone because when I went to Australia and Sydney um i never hosted a show in bombay and i was there for 6 years and i hosted nine shows in one year in sydney wow uh, and things just flew yes and and right place right time that's what i say <laughs> right so literally so <laughs> so i think i think it was just a case of uh, yeah i think just being in the right place right time and and doing the right things i think also you know kind of being able to uh, reach out to the right kind of people and and get and get what works for you yes which is what i think eventually it always boils down to yeah yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah. you also talked about your mental health you know mm. uh, and it's such an important subject yeah. which uh, of course a lot of people are talking about it openly which is great yeah. and i think that we are still far behind in this subject we yeah. still have to do a lot of work yeah. um with men you know masculinity <laughs> and everything it's it's just so from the outside it's it's glorified yeah. number 1 number 2 yeah. men are always told that you have to deal with drama and trauma yeah you know usually whatever is happening you have to deal with it but you're never men are not told Okay, how do you deal with your own traumas? Correct. I think that learning, even yeah. in school, yeah. when I study, yeah. it wasn't spoken about. Yeah. And I think men have been put on this extra pressure. Yeah. How do you deal with it? I I've always been an endorser of the fact that I think mental health is a very universal um, human being. Issue. Exactly. Exactly. Not a, it's not, not a, a gender not based. A gender yes. Thing. Yeah. uh because a you really never know when it strikes and it's not mm. like some sort of a physical illness that you feel in your head Correct. or heart yeah it, it really is something which is a, a lifelong process mm. if i may say so because many a times in the kind of cases that have come out of mental health mm. uh the su- no successful of people in this world as a matter of fact more successful people are mentally mm. uh you know disabled than yeah. you know people who actually have nothing in life mm. uh which goes to show that it, it, it's not about money Yeah. or about any sort of financial stability or you know kind of getting a job or whatever but just how you are feeling mm. um how i've been able to deal with it is identifying what is right for me and what is not which i briefly kind of touched upon but i think also speaking about because i'm also a motivational speaker uh, a lot of people think that you know you know he's giving a lot of gyan and speaking and stuff but but very few understand that the reason why i am a motivational speaker is also cuz that's therapy for me yes what i'm speaking to you is what i should be telling myself mm. and if i'm telling it to you 
I'm in any which way. I'm I'm in most. You're revising it for yourself. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. So so uh, I did a series for about what eleven to twelve um, sort of videos, just putting things out about whether it was happiness, whether it was kindness, whether it was persistence. Mm. Uh, we never give up courage and all those things, mm. and I think it resonated with a lot of people. Mm. But I have to say also that uh, there comes a time when if you're a motivational speaker. You're also going to be a little out of motivation. Yes, of and, course. And, and, and I, Who do you go to then? Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, now what do I do? Now I'm stuck. So I mean, I'd watch a bunch of speeches. I'd watch a lot of TEDx speeches. Yes. Um, you know, just maybe put on a film. Hmm. I think a lot of people give too much of importance to this idea of do something which makes you happy. Hmm. And 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 very many times of life. Doing nothing can also make you very happy. Absolutely, right? I agree. And 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 it's not like you have to pick up a book and read. It's not like you have to watch a film. Just watching space and watching the sky and and being in a state of nothingness is very very alluring. It's beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. So, <laughs> so right, and it's like, oh, are you okay? I'm like, I was okay until now until you asked me. <laughs> I was okay just when I was okay. You asked me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why did you ask me? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So so it's that. But I I mean, look, I mean, everyone is 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 made in a different way. The way I handle mental health is um, I, I I always am very sympathetic towards it because I've I've been through it myself. Uh, you know, and of course you have these bouts of understanding what is good for you. Hmm. Uh, I, I think now more than ever before, it is a prevalent issue because a lot of the population in the world are going through it as we speak yeah, because yeah. of the obvious the reason. Pandemic, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think I think it's very inevitable because people don't get it. Hmm. But but you have to actually try and find it out by asking yourself hmm. what is good for you. Hmm. Try and avoid the vo- noises and the voices that are getting at you because and even the loved ones in life hmm. care a lot about you, hmm. but sometimes they are absolutely unaware of what is good for you yeah they look at life from their perspective and their judgment of what they should be advising Correct. you on Correct. but i and, and i will just briefly touch upon this there's this term of toxic positivity hmm. and while it is very important in life to be positive hmm. i just want to put this out there it is impossible impossible to be positive during a pandemic when life hits you with so many things hmm. it is almost wrong to ask a human being to say but hold on tight na it'll get better mm. how mm. show me how mm. can you do it because if you can't do it why are you telling me mm. the honest yeah. truth is the honest fact is this will get better but you don't know it mm. and if you can't tell me an exact answer for that don't tell me it'll get better of course even i know that mm. but that doesn't make me any less positive mm. that just makes me very realistic towards life yes and that's just the best way of looking at it True. because why fool yourself about something that's going to get better because this fooling is it's going in a sense of disbelief and hope which mm. you have that hope you know yeah hope is essential but yeah. i think that we need to start acknowledging um the emotions that we feel and it's, it's okay to feel negative it's okay to it's not okay be okay it's okay to feel yes it's okay yeah yeah right <laughs> do not be okay yeah, yeah it's absolutely fine and I think that if if we feel negative yeah. or if we feel broken or if we feel sad, people yeah. instantly come and say, "Don't do this." Yeah. Uh, get positive. Listen. Yeah. You know, let me, especially in today's time, when people are grieving. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Heavily. Yeah. I know for the fact when somebody is losing his or her family member, yeah. others are like, "It's a circle of life." Let that person cry. Right. Let that person, you know, uh, <sighs> cry out. for the loss that they have had it's okay it's fine that's how human beings deal with pain and, and this only comes with understanding that this is not happening to me as yet because the day it happens to you you'll think what a fool i was to give him advice on that and it's okay after you know? after some time yeah. he or she yeah. will get better sure but at this point in time the person needs yeah. to went out and yeah. that's the solution but that's what i said what's right for you right what's right for you and i think what's right for you is what only you know exactly i think i think the the best way of looking at things is detach yourself from the voices and the noises right and 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 genuinely de- look deeper mm. because that's the only answer you can get mm. and that's probably the best answer you'll ever absolutely. get absolutely you know yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so you have been creating a lot of content mm. you know i see your reels your posts and it's incredible like they actually give me a lot of uh, positive positivity honestly oh, I'm so and glad. i love it yeah <laughs> they're nice <laughs> How how do you keep up to be you know being relevant because there is so much again a lot of chaos a lot yeah. of noise a lot of content now how do you keep up to be staying relevant yeah so i think it's always an issue right with with a lot of people that are creating a lot of things mm. the the question that is often asked is to how do you sort of structure that aspect into relevance mm. and and i guess uh, 
influence mm. uh, because the very idea of the word influencer mm. is to be able to create a change make a difference in someone's life mm. and for yourself and i think make a living out of it if it happens to kind of bring mm. in money mm. or just by virtue of being a good human being which is what social media can try and endorse mm. uh with my content feast i've tried my level best to do what i'm good at doing which is in the in the in the realm of film mm. television um hosting um of course because i'm on uh, on various different platforms um so i kind of when i'm featuring on podcasts and stuff try and bring about snippets which are relevant to people in that very moment uh, especially now more than mm. ever before mm. uh, people want to only uh, nice things uh, even if it's not really nice just fool them by saying nice things because mm. that will kind of you know start the process of thinking in the way in which they should <laughs> so i think it's yeah you know so, so you got to you got to you got to cheat a bit a little you know as a, as a like if you actually need it, i'm like not at all it is for you <laughs> but it make you feel better yeah good so the job is done yeah. but yeah no i think uh So that's there, and then of course because I've done a bit of modeling before, I've been into the you know um, you know fashion side of it too. Mm. So I try and make those reels because there's a lot of trending stuff that's happening on social media, right? And I think you have to you know move along with the tre- the, the, the yeah. wave of trends. Yeah. Uh, so I try and mix it up with one day I'll do maybe a post on you know what's happening with you know my mental health or the world. Yes. But one day to you know some some new clothes that I've got you know so if I'm doing a, an endorsement with something. um one day it could be just my podcast hmm. whether I'm, you know featuring on sort of a platform talking about something which is relevant yeah one day it could be linked to a film yes. uh putting up you know a lot of the throw- throwbacks and the, yeah. the flashbacks stuff yeah, and yeah, the past yeah. work yeah. uh really resonates a lot with people and i think i've noticed one thing family pictures and 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 really putting up your old young pictures garners a lot of attention and likes so so keep putting that up <laughs> shamelessly keep doing it keep doing it so i'm like so when i'm lacking in when i'm lacking in uh, sort of traction and people don't keep liking it i put up a picture of my mom, mom give me just post please i want i want likes please really do you do that yeah i have it always <laughs> I'm like, 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 I'm or a, or a, or a hashtag mm. uh, or or a share subscribe or a like button mm. it it is unfortunately a bit of a give There's me a hug button it, yes yes and, absolutely and and and, and, and i'm missing I need you to be button heard, yeah. and i need to be heard button and yeah. i'm screaming inside mm. but but i think while social media can also be sometimes not the right thing for you because it's unfortunately used by many people to harm a lot of others if in the comment section is a lot of hate mm. you know there's a lot of hate propaganda being developed and it's a good thing that now platforms are you know really filtering that yeah. out because yeah. people yeah. don't need more of it yes i also think it's great it's a great device and a tool to kind of inform you on what's happening in the world to keep you posted and updated on the latest mm. um while it is a great kind of companion sometimes to kind of just be informed about the stuff that's happening right right be a part of someone else's life and i think even for celebrities and people that are very famous social media has brought about this idea of personal touch hmm. you know hmm. earlier we used to hmm. see stars on television and on screen and they were really far from us they had this larger than life image yes now yeah, everybody's like just so now we can chat with that? them we yeah. can like them yeah. we can you know, uh, yeah. you know they reply back right talk, right you know right. they reshare your post stories and yeah. stuff so i think it is never there's no more disparity about Correct. who's who because at mm. the end of the day we're just human beings you know Correct. uh and, and and very colorful human beings yeah you know, kind of put our lives out there yeah absolutely yeah. And, I, and i i personally believe that we're all the lead character of our own lives yeah. we're all the heroes of our own lives yeah, yeah? yeah. uh and yeah. Uh, yeah. we all have the power to yeah. make our lives movie sure. the best movie absolutely you know we have the power we yeah. have the power to make it the worst yeah. and we have the power to make it the best 100% now yeah. as for you yeah how are you making your lives movie the best movie this is actually interesting a question because a long time back i was asked this uh question and then, and then they said uh how do you want to be remembered you know mm. what is mm-hmm. the legacy mm-hmm. you want to be you know correct yeah that's kind of another having, way of yeah, yeah right essentially so i i kind of kind of let it go in one line by saying i genuinely want to be remembered as someone who gave his lifetime doing what passion could describe wow and 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 if and if i can do 20% of justice to that sentence mm. in doing everything that was passionate mm. if i can uh, just bring a smile on someone's face by the work i do i really honestly jagriti my life's motive is is my work bringing a smile on someone's face yes yeah. because if it's not then it's absolutely useless doing it mm. the effort that's gone behind it is not achieving the motive mm. 
Uh, and I think that just doesn't serve its purpose. Yeah. The very fact that you are able to do that, which is much more bigger than earning money, uh, I think respect is far more important. But I think when you talk about charity, charity is not just about how much you're donating to some place. It is also about making a difference in someone's life. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. I think it's a line I heard from Gary Vee, who I've had the privilege of seeing up front in Australia. Um, and again, he has this aura around him because, you know, 7,000 people watching him that second running when he came on stage. And, and he said something which hit me so hard, which I will never forget for the rest of my life. He's like, why am I here today? Why has Sydney called me to speak amongst the other speakers who have been here since morning? Why have you come to see me? Because mm. I add value. Mm. I bring value to your life, mm. which you never had before. Mm. And you never will have with somebody else. And therefore me. Look at the confidence. Yeah, right? And, and, and it's like, that is, that is why he is what he is. But, mm. but then again, you, if, if you truly want to stand out from the crowd, mm. you have to have that confidence. Yes. You know, I, think, I think confidence is an important thing. And if you don't have it, then fake it till you make it. <laughs> because a lot of people aren't very confident, but yeah. they just come across to be confident. Yeah. Yeah. But, but because that faking of being confident has done them so much of good, yeah. it's now a pattern of life. I think that's what Priyanka Chopra says. Yeah. 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 And she's incredible. I love her journey. Yeah. She's such a role model. And she always says, like, I always faked it till I made it. She, I think I think you always have to. I think in a certain sense, because I think actors and creative act artists by by nature are very um, insecure people. Hmm. By nature, they're very sort of unsure about what they're doing. Hmm. Because any which way is they live a dual lifestyle. Hmm. They're, they're, they're living a lifestyle on screen. Hmm. And they are trying to figure out aspects and parts of their personality hmm. when the camera says, cut. Mm. right and and I think you don't know who you are yeah. and I remember Shah Rukh Khan when I interviewed him he said now the lines are blurring am I being Shah Rukh Khan playing Raj or is Raj being SRK yeah. and he's like I can't now tell the difference but I do it I do it 600 times a day and I, and I fool the audience that this is me but do I really know this is me <laughs> this we is don't me, know yeah. we'll never find out I mean I think such so, an illusion yeah no? it Isn't is an it? illusion life is indeed an illusion the illusion you which you try and make pretty by wearing good clothes <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I really, really, really like that. This has been amazing. I would want to close it with something interesting. So because you have stayed in uh, America, mm -hmm. you've stayed in Australia, and you've lived in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. and I know you've grown up in Oman, but let's stick to these three uh, countries. And uh, would you be able to um, say your favorite dialogue? Any, any of your favorite dialogue in these three accents. So I would want you to say it in an Australian accent, sure. American accent, and I want you to say it in the proper Mumbai Done. <laughs> accent. Okay. That'll come on very naturally, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so which is your favorite dialogue? You, you choose. My favorite dialogue. Uh, could it just be anything? Yeah, anything. Uh, all right. Uh, you live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. So I guess the Australian way to do it? Yes. I might live once, do it once, once is enough. <laughs> right, might? <Mike>? Good eye, might. <laughs> American? I, I guess the American one would be pretty close to like, you live once, but if you do right, once is enough. <laughs> the Indian one would be, hey, uh, listen now, you live once only, do it right now. <laughs> so much, just do it once, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm asking. So. All right, this is great. Thanks, Jagadi. Thank you so much Thank for having so me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is awesome, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If it has inspired you even slightly, then please like, share and comment. See you in the next one. Until then, remember, our time is limited. Let's make the most of it. Hey everyone, my name is Aran Saher. You're watching me on You Are Human. And please like, share and subscribe. Keep watching You Are Human on YouTube and listen to these amazing conversations on Spotify and other audio platforms.